Wrap me in a bolt of lightning Send me on my way still smiling Maybe that's the way I should go Straight into the mouth of the unknown I left the spare key on the table I never really thought I'd be able to Say I merely visit on the weekends I lost my whole life and a dear friend I've said it so many times Hello everyone and welcome to Total Packers with Matt LaFleur, Larry McCarron along with the head coach of the Green Bay Packers and Matt, Packers, Seahawks, Sunday afternoon, Lambeau Field. What kind of game are you expecting? I'm expecting a physical four quarter battle and that's exactly what you saw in the games the other day versus uh, when Seattle played at Philly and um, you know got a lot of respect for Pete Carroll and his ability to get his team up each and every week and, and would expect nothing more or less than a competitive football game. Defensively speaking, Matt, it's always seemed that Seattle kind of does what it does. Is that still part of their football personality? Yeah, absolutely. They have an identity and they're a big time cover three team, but uh, they've added a few wrinkles this year. And, and again, it's a good defense. They've been doing it for a long time. KJ Wright, Bobby Wagner, as, as good as they come in this league. Of course, their headline act is Russell Wilson. And the things that jump out at you with him, number one, the mobility part. And number two, his ability to throw deep. Yeah, no, Russell is, he is slippery, and he can manipulate the pocket, he can get out and extend and create plays, and he's going to be a handful. He always is. He, he was playing at an MVP level this year, and, you know, he's got great arm talent as well. So we're going to have to do a great job of, of containing him, keeping him in the pocket, and not letting him get loose and create those plays. D.K. Metcalf, hadn't heard a lot about him, but he comes up with seven catches, 160 yards, and a touchdown against the Eagles. He's a special talented wide receiver. He sure is, and he's a guy that we, we had the opportunity to interview at the Combine. Uh, he's about as impressive as a physique as any, any receiver in the National Football League. So he has had a great rookie season, and hopefully we can uh, lock him down on Sunday. Now that the bye week is in the rear view mirror, did it turn out to be productive? It certainly was. It, it gave us a great opportunity for our, first of all, for our guys to get healthy. And then we did a lot of self scout and, and evaluated what we need to continue to do and what we need to improve upon. Can you tell us anything that the self scout told you? Yeah, it, it just more or less gives you a great look at what you've put on tape, what the opponents studying and uh, you know so you can come up with schemes or whatever to play off of stuff that you've already shown them. Matt, much of your team has no playoff experience. How will you handle that? I think the the message to our football team is it's just like any other week and it's yes it's the playoffs but we're gonna approach it the same way our schedule is staying the same and Basically, guys got to go out there, trust their training, trust their preparation, and, and go play ball like they have all season long. Thank you, Matt. Just ahead, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Rodgers. Don't go away. I've been fortunate to play a long time and done a lot statistically. Lost the left side. Devontae's got it to the end zone for a touchdown. Oh, what a throw. The only stat that matters when you're my age and you're sitting here is championships and whatever it takes. And then that's what I'm going to do for this team.
Total Packers with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by Bell and & Health and by Fleet Farm. Play action, back to throw, Rodgers, wide open, Jimmy Graham. Rainbows, right side, got overalls, got him, 10, 5, Rodgers looking around, over the middle, Lazard, leaping Graham, touchdown! That's kind of the identity of this football team. It hasn't been pretty at times, but when we have to make plays, we make plays. He's going to walk it in. Aaron Rodgers with the touchdown. Time to shine tonight. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. Welcome back to Total Packers, where our very, very special guest is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, thank you for being with us. Let's begin with the task at hand, the Seattle Seahawks. What do you think? Well, we've had some, some fun ones over the years against them. Uh, you know, they've got a great football team. They've been together for a long time, kind of the core of that team on both sides of the ball. There have been some moving pieces, but we've had some memorable games over the years. Do they run the same scheme, or have they changed that? Well, I think the base of it is very similar, what they've run for years, but uh, the names are different, you know, especially on the back end. Young guys who are playing well. Griffin has, has had a really nice season. He's athletic, strong, tough. Flowers on the other side is their prototypical Seattle corner. He's big, long arm, can run. They've added some pass rushers to the mix with uh, Jadavion and Ziggy Anza. They're still always stout in the middle. And you got the leading tackler in the league in Bobby and, you know, Savvy. Savvy Vett and KJ at the other linebacker. Aaron, most of your teammates have zero playoff experience. You have a wealth of it. If you were going to open their heads and pour some of that experience in there, what would you pour in? Poise. Uh, I think it's important to to find that calm in your mind in these games because it seems so much bigger. Obviously, it's more important because win or go home, which the first 16 of the season aren't like that. But great opportunity to learn how to keep your poise and to stay calm and to find that relaxed flow state in the game. And I think the team that does it quicker and, and sustains it is usually the team that wins. When you look at your guys' production, both offensively and defensively, in terms of yardage, you rank 18th in the league on both offense and defense. Do you think that balance is kind of an underappreciated asset? Well, I think with stats, you can make them look any way you want them to look. Well, we like to make yeah. them look positive here. Well, I appreciate that, Lair. <laughs> But I think the most important thing is the winning part. Um, we have had balance, I think, in one important area, and that is in the fourth quarters of these games when we've had to have a drive or had to have a stop, we make it. And there's been so many games that have come down to us putting something together in the fourth quarter on offense and winning a football game or us not doing it and relying on the defense to come up with a big stop, and they've done it and they've done to the tune of 13 to three. And I think those wins are so valuable. And I said it weeks ago about winning ugly. Nobody cares what the, the optics are. The only thing that matters is winning. And I think uh, because you know this league is more about flash and the glitz and the glamor and the splash, and we haven't been that team this year, uh, people have forgotten about the success that we've had and how dangerous we can be, and that's probably a good thing for us. People do a lot of talking about your individual numbers. With this team, at this time, could it be a case of less is more? Well, I mean, I think the most important thing is taking care of the football and being opportunistic, and I feel like I've done that my entire career. In some seasons, you know, I've needed to throw 40 for us to win, and some I haven't. And this has been one of those years. Our running back had 19 touchdowns. As opposed to years past, you know, where we weren't as great consistently in the red zone, we ran the ball really well in the red zone this year. The gold zone, as we like to call it. And a big part of that was Aaron Jones and I think the schemes that we used in those opportunities. I think now we have a little bit more balance. And it's on me to do uh, what's in the best interest of the team. And that's taking care of the football, being opportunistic when I need to and getting us in the right situations, you know, with these, these schematics that we have and the, and the CAN system. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great challenge. Um, and, and I'll just finish with this. You know, I've been fortunate enough to play a long time and done a lot statistically. Um, the only stat that matters when you're my age and you're sitting here is championships. And 
whatever it takes. And then that's what I'm going to do for this team. Aaron, you just mentioned the word challenge. On the flip side of that, what has been the most rewarding thing for you this season? I don't know, Larry. I mean, this, this has been such a fun season. Uh, just so many great uh, moments and memories. I think embracing the change has been a, a good challenge, I think, for all of us. And it's been a lot of fun. I mean, made some great friends uh, with some of these coaches that have come in and, and some of the players that have come in as well. And just seeing the, the different personalities mesh together as a leader, knowing that I got uh, such a great uh, support system. Uh, and that I can be a support system for young leaders as well has been a lot of fun. But just seeing the rise of Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith and Billy Turner and what he's meant to this team and Adrian Amos and Mercedes Lewis, you know, coming to his own and watching Aaron Jones develop from an incredible talent to now he's a talented leader uh, has been a blast. And watching him and Jamal's relationship and just how selfless those two guys are and you know, watching the, the line gel together week after week and play together and bringing Elton along. And there's just so many fun storylines, and it's all built around relationships. And the relationships have really made this thing work this year. Eight new head coaches in the National Football League this past season. Matt LaFleur, the only one to have a winning record, let alone the number two seed in the NFC. What's his mystical hit? I think that he understands the idea of leadership, that it's not just talking all the time, it's listening, it's understanding, it's allowing for input, it's delegating well. And I think he's done a good job of all those things this year, is really listening and being creative and bringing a great work ethic to the table and then being great at working together with people and delegating responsibility. And I think he's adapted and evolved throughout the season, letting the players you know, take control of the team and, and lead the team. And because the best teams are player-led teams, he understands that he's been around some great ones. And, and I think he really uh, allowed our guys to be themselves this year. Let's finish up by going fast forward. Let's pretend it's a month from now and you are basking in the glow of another Super Bowl championship, and you get asked, what was the key for your team to be able to accomplish this? What do you think you'd end up saying? I mean, I've been saying it for a while, but it's character. We just, we're just a high character group, and we know how to win. We've made great plays in clutch situations in important games to win. If we're lifting that Lombardi trophy in less than a month, it's because of character wins in the fourth quarter and it starts with this week. Aaron, thanks for being with us and good luck for a deep run into the playoffs. Thank you, Rock. All right, coming up this week's Chalk Talk, don't go away. Value added. That extra feature that goes beyond expectations. The Packers have it at wide receiver. Those guys will block. They also have it at cornerback because those guys will tackle. Jair Alexander playing classic cover two on second and long. The ball will get completed elsewhere, but watch Jair. This is called tackling through and not to. Now let's put the spotlight on Kevin King. The Vikings want to get their 242 pound tight end in the open field against a 200 pound corner. That's just what they have right here. That's the plan. The Vikings may want to rethink that plan after Kevin King blows a play up for a loss of one. Tremon Williams, 36 years young and the Lions are running a screen pass at him. As a matter of fact, they have a 6'6", 250-pound blocker for them. But somehow, Tremont goes right by him and spills this thing for a loss of two. Chandon Sullivan, the Packers dime back, only plays when they're expecting a pass, but watch him play the run. David Montgomery outweighs him by 30 pounds, but Chandon stops him dead in his tracks. The football gets more physical during the playoffs, and the Packer cornerbacks are ready, willing, and able.
I know a lot of offenses come into the game, the very first thing when they game plan is, will these corners tackle? And our guys have answered that challenge. I thought our, our corners have tackled uh, extremely well, especially in the last month. Total Packers with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by your local Chevrolet dealer, by Johnsonville, and by Spectrum. Welcome back to Total Packers. Matt, recently Pro Football Focus put out its all-rookie team, and you had a couple players make it. I'd like to get your impressions of the year Elton Jenkins had at left guard. Elton's done a great job, first of all, stepping in for Lane Taylor, and I feel like Elton's a guy that has gotten better each and every week, and we expect a lot out of him. He's no longer a rookie anymore, as we tell him, but uh, it's a credit to Adam Stenovich, to Luke Buckus, and really the entire offensive line for taking him in under their wing and, and helping him become a really good player for us. And on defense, one of the safeties was Darnell Savage. Your impressions of his first year? Yeah, I think Darnell's done a great job. He's another guy that continues to get better each and every week. Again, Jason Simmons has done a great job with him. Uh, I think having some veterans in the room like Adrian Amos, Tremont Williams has really helped bring Darnell along. Since we're kind of going into honors, I want to talk about a couple of unsung heroes. On offense, that would be Mercedes Lewis. What a dimension he brings to the party as far as his blocking and his leadership. And on defense, Chandon Sullivan. He's been very productive for you. Yeah, both of those guys. And I can't say enough about Mercedes Lewis. He has been such a great veteran leader for us. He really helps all the young guys. We've got some young guys in that tight end room with, with Jay Sternberger, Robert Tanyan. Um, and he's Mr. Consistent for us. And he doesn't get the accolades he deserves, but he's out there. He's a big part of our run game. And he's, act, he's made a few plays in the pass game as well. And then when you talk about Shannon Sullivan, what a great pickup that was. You know, Goody and his crew did a great job of, of scouting him, bringing him in, and he's played a lot of, of snaps for us this season and has, has really made some big plays and has had a tremendous impact on our defense. Matt, have an idea for next year. I was talking to Alan Lazard about his role in your 11 goon personnel <laughs> package. How about next year, a goon of the week? And that's strictly a compliment. Yeah, absolutely. You can't have enough Alan Lazard because he is a guy that's physical and he does it not only on offense, but he does it on special teams as well. But, uh, you know, I'm just really happy for him. He's a guy that wasn't on our initial 53 and he just continued to grind and work and, and he's proved himself this year. All right, coming up, the last word from the coach. Stay with us. Welcome back. Time for the last word from the coach. And Matt, the football season, even the playoffs, is kind of a journey, not a destination. If there's one thing you want to see your team improve at during your playoff run, what would, what would it be? I think just playing four quarters of consistent football. I think there's been a lot of highs and, and some lows in there. But um, just really fortunate to have such a great group of guys that know how to battle, that trust each other, that never blink in, in times of adversity. And I think that's a big reason why we won 13 games this year. And, and uh, we'll always take it one week at a time. And we got to go take that same approach into the game versus Seattle. Matt, thank you. Good luck in the playoffs. And thank you for watching. Until next time, take care. And how about this running back, Aaron Jones? And the Packers defense delivers the dagger. Green Bay is into the divisional round of the playoffs.